Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Ford Dixon, owner and creator of Estate Management Systems and How to Manage a Mansion. So we're talking this week about compensation, hourly versus salary, and why it's so important to become compliant. This is the wild west nature of our business, and it often blurs the line here with ethical compensation. Domestic staff suing their wealthy employers for unpaid overtime, no scheduled breaks, and toxic work environments validated in this industry as just part of it. But repeatedly, I see clients' properties, I hear about it during coaching calls, and I read it in the media about high-profile celebrity lawsuits. And in the short term, I get it, classifying your household staff a salaried employees seems like a win-win relationship that guarantees everyone a regular paycheck with an added benefit of not having to keep a timesheet. However, what may initially seem like a win-win scenario can snowball into a situation that becomes damaging. So let's look at this from your staff's perspective. Let's just say you've got a new staff member on board and he's happy because uh, he signed on to a regular paycheck, but he's not aware of the actual hours needed. So he doesn't also know how often the principal will be traveling away from the property. So they feel like they've signed up for a secure regular paycheck with some added benefits, but little do they know that accumulating over 40 hour work weeks with no bonus compensation will soon become an exhausting expectation. When your staff feels depleted or devalued and their personal lives and health start to be affected, they will become more reluctant to go to the extra mile. Even if they get reimbursed, for this regular demand on their time, eventually burnout is inevitable with that kind of work environment. And no amount of money or lack of control of their time uh, will compensate them for the unhealthy work environment. And you'll start to lose really talented and valued staff. From your estate manager's perspective, here's what happens. Let's say the estate manager typically has no control over how employees are paid or classified, yet they're the ones that often take the biggest hit when a disgruntled employee files a complaint with the EEOC. Soon after a claim is filed, a caseworker will call for timekeeping records. Most homeowners don't have these state required documents and they rely on estate managers to just deal with it. Countless hours are lost during EEOC interviews and fulfilling document requests. This is valuable time that your estate manager has to give up for fulfilling roles that really aren't theirs. Here's why the principal should care. Even though most principals will willingly accept financial consequences of misclassifying their household staff, there's no time keeping records. You don't have to, you know, you can cut the same paycheck every two weeks. You know what the payroll is going to be and you know how much the uh, taxes are going to be withheld. It makes it a very convenient option. Even if the only immediate punishment for this type of behavior is a slap on the wrist and a fine, there are many additional risks that all the money in the world can't mitigate. Here are eight of the most damaging consequences of improper classification, unfair compensation, and overtime exploitation. Number one, a disgruntled employee inside of your home could be hiding behind a smiling face and it poses a risk for ill or vindictive behavior. Number two, frustrated employees are less likely to support each other with teamwork. Let's say when there's heavy lifting or someone needs to be up on a ladder. 
which means your risk for injury and property damage increases. Number three, instead of assisting with day-to-day -day needs, your estate manager will likely <coughs> be caught up and overwhelmed in the claims of lawsuits. Number four, you might lose top talent and develop a habit of high turnover, which gets you blackballed by domestic staff recruiters. This takes time and money and effort to fix. Number five, in addition to unpaid overtime, the employer can be penalized with fines up to $1,000 per violation plus the interest. Multiply this times the number of staff and you'll start to calculate the cost of this risky compensation practice. Number six, the time and effort required to recruit, onboard, and train new staff is often underrated. It can take you months to integrate a new employee properly. The energy that you could have saved could have gone to improving your household. And in many states, number seven, employees have up to two years to file unpaid overtime claims. This means that even after they leave your employment, they can change their mind. And even with a non-disclosure agreement, they could be likely voided if there's been illegal activity. And finally, number eight, and the biggest reason that I think everyone should pay attention to this issue is that with high net worth families being accused in the public eye of unfair wages, unpaid overtime, no lunch breaks, and toxic work treatment, treatment gets the media's attention. So how can all of this pre be prevented? Absolutely get a time tracking app and approve all your overtime hours and be willing to pay up as needed. Make a conscious decision about who and when you ask for over overtime hours. If you're understaffed because you constantly need your staff to work overtime, hire more people. <laughs> Instead of pushing the boundaries of your current staff, couldn't you support them with getting additional help? This will benefit you as much as it will benefit them. And if you require 24 seven service, split the workload among three staff members and rotate this daunting responsibility. Remember, your staff are humans and not robots, and they require sleep too. Better rested staff will help you get a better quality of service. And finally, make sure your staff feels heard, appreciated, and fairly compensated. And just ask them. Check with your staff on a regular basis schedule performance and salary reviews, and stick to these appointments. Tell them you appreciate them, say thank you, and make sure they feel supported to the best of their abilities, or do they need tools and training and some teamwork expectation set for your improved services. Here's a textbook example that I just love sharing. I have an estate manager client who decided to negotiate her salary as hour hourly. And she's willing and regularly works overtime when she's able, but she feels fully compensated for this time and in control of her options. The extra time she spends at work affords her additional compensation and she can choose to use for her per uh, housekeeping services, her online grocery shopping needs, and food delivery for the nights when she works late. She's now on track to end her year with more than double her 40 hour per week compensation. She regularly offers her employer less expensive alternatives to completing their request, like courier services, her assistant can do this, or online shopping 
options versus running around town for purchases. Still, they often opt for her services because they trust that she'll do it right the first time. In the end, she feels well compensated and valued. There's your win-win relationship. Her employer is very happy too. He approves all of her overtime on their time tracking app, and he has the option to assign the task to her or to dedicate it to an outside resource. What does this all come down to? Before your household staff gets one more paycheck, I want you to look closely at all sides of this equation. And while you decide whether it's worth taking the legal and PR risk, let us help you create a personnel plan to outline their employment details. Our How to Manage a Mansion personnel module will help you create documents to outline absolutely every aspect of required and assumed duties for their roles. I'm going to take you behind the scenes to show you what that looks like now. We're inside of the How to Manage a Mansion personnel module. In this board, we'll be able to capture, capture absolutely everything to do with your household staff, and you'll be able to delineate it in a way that makes sense to you. If you open up a card, you can invite a team member like your chief of staff, your principal, or your estate manager. You can create checklists. You can assign dates. You can make attachments or add photos. And then you can check off information that's been completed and keep track of initiatives. You can also communicate with your team members about any updates. For more information about the personnel module or any of our other 11 modules for managing luxury lifestyles and properties, go to howtomanageamansion.com.